Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to create modular sprite sheets as used for guests in Battle Round Tycoon. We're going to use masks to define primary and secondary colors for our bodies. Let's begin. So here is the sprite sheet we have been creating in this series. We have the base part, which for now really just contains the foot. Then we have a body that we are simply picking from four different choices. And then we have the head, which we have been composing from a base head. Then on top of it, we had a randomized hair, randomized beard, and we also tint random colors on both the hair, the beard, and also the skin color. So with everything that we've learned so far, we have all the tools to also be able to customize our bodies and be able to apply both primary and secondary colors. So essentially, we're going to do something very similar to what we did with the skin color where we have the skin color, but we also have a mask to make sure we don't tint inside the eyes. So that's the same process we're going to apply to the body in order to separate two parts and apply a different color to either of them. The game is out now on Steam, so check it out to see what I'm teaching here apply to a real game. So over here is the sprite sheet that contains all the bodies we have been picking randomly. And over here is another one which has some parts tinted in white. Essentially, we're going to apply a tint to where we have the white parts and on the ones that are already colored, we are going to leave those as is. So now let's create the mask. So in here I have the white sprite opened in Photoshop. And now since we're dealing with pixels, we can actually fit both the primary and the secondary areas right on the same texture. So in here, just for testing, I'm going to place just a circle. I'm going to place a pure green circle. So go in here, pick pure green, so 0, 255 and 0. Place it in here, so our green color will be the primary mask. And then print a blue circle. Again, use a pure color to make it easier for testing. And this will be our secondary color. So by removing the base layer, this is the mask that we're going to use in order to test. So essentially we want to tint this area in one color and this area in another color. And those tints will be applied on the base white spreadsheet. So here is our mask in Unity, and now let's head to the code. So over here, the first thing we need is to grab reference to our textures. So let's add some serialized fields. We're going to have the body texture in white and the body texture mask. So let's go down here and see how we were doing the face tint. Here we define a array that contains all of the various skin colors. We pick a random one from the array. Then we get the pixels from the base head texture. Then we grab the pixels from the base head mask texture. And we tint the pixels inside the mask with our skin color. So let's copy this and do the same thing down here on the body pixels. And for now, let's test only with the second body. So in here, we are grabbing the white pixels. We are grabbing the mask. And then let's define a color for the primary color. In this case, let's just use a pure red. So now in here, let's tint the body pixels using the body mask as our mask and tint with the primary color. Okay, so let's test and see how our body looks. Okay, there's our body, and as you can see, it was tinted in red exactly where the mask is present. So, so far, so good. We are doing exactly the same thing as we did for the head. We are tinting only inside a mask. Now, obviously, we want primary and secondary colors, so we need to figure out how to mask, but only when the mask matches our mask color. Over here in the mask texture, we define the primary mask on a green color, and the secondary mask using a blue color. So back in our code, let's make a function similar to this one. The only difference is we're going to add another parameter that will be a color for our mask color. And the only thing we're going to change is in here, we're going to apply the tint if the mask alpha is bigger than zero. So there's something on the mask and the mask color equals the same as our mask color. So over here, we can now use this function now for the primary color, we defined a new color. We were using a pure green. So for the red, we give it a zero. For the green, we give it a one. For the blue, we give it a zero. All right, so we should be able to tint the body pixels, but only when they match the green color. Okay, so let's see if only one of our circles appears tinted. And yep, there it is. Our tint is only being applied on the mask that matches our green color. Okay, so now we can go back in the code and easily apply the other mask. So in here, let's first define our primary color mask. So here we apply the primary and now let's apply the secondary. For the secondary color, let's use a yellow. 
And for the secondary mask color, we use a pure blue. So let's use this and apply this. So again, we are using the same body pixels with the same body mask, but we're going to tint it using the secondary color, but only when the mask matches the secondary mask color. All right, now let's test and see if the final body has two tinted colors. And yep, there it is. This circle is being tinted in red and this circle is being tinted in yellow. So just like that, we have everything we need. Now all we need to do is actually correctly apply the mask to our base textures. Okay, so here is the final mask being correctly placed. As you can see, we have various areas for the primary color and various areas for the secondary color. So let's see the result with this. And yep, there it is, the final body being composed with a primary and secondary color as defined in our mask. So with just some buttons to test and make sure we can use any color. Okay, so here we are with some testing buttons to set the primary and secondary color. So in here, let's set the primary color to yellow, the secondary color to green, and as you can see, everything is updating correctly. So we can set any color that we want, and it all works perfectly fine. And now with all the bodies enabled, since we used a texture to define our mask, you can see that everything is automatically applied to all of them. So I can change all of them, and they all get tinted correctly. The game is out now on Steam, so check it out to see what I'm teaching here apply to a real game. So there you have it. We added even more customization to our sprite sheet by defining primary and secondary colors to our body sprite. In the next video, we're going to figure out how to save and load so we always get the same sprite sheet. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.